Hi everyone. Quick video here to show uh, how we can run a basic simulation study in SolidWorks. So um, if we want to do some, some part analysis, this is really useful um, for us. So I've got this cylinder that we modeled in, the, in my last SolidWorks video, and I want to go ahead and, and do a simulation on this part. So the first step we need to do is come in here and, and add in our simulation um, functionality. So if I click on the SolidWorks add-ons, you should have a SolidWorks simulation button here. Um, I've already clicked it because it takes a second sometimes to load this, so just to kind of avoid that. Um, but if you click this button, it'll look like it hasn't really done anything and maybe just sit there um, for a minute. And then eventually you'll gain these simulation tabs, um, which can um, help us actually carry out the simulation. So if I click over then to my simulation tab, I'm going to click New Study because I want to start a new, a new analysis. And here you can change the name. You can define if it's a static um, simulation or you know a number of other simulations. I'm just going to stick with static. And now I, I would just want to go through and kind of basically walk through um, applying what I need. Um, one thing that you'll, you'll typically do is apply a material. So this is just specifying what material your part is, and you can select from their you know, database of lots of different types of materials. You can define your own material. Um, since I'm only really in this, uh, in this example gonna be looking at stress, it doesn't really matter what my material is. Stress is um, independent of material. But if I wanted to accurately know, you know how much deformation I might expect um, or any of those other criteria, if I wanted to use some of the mass functions to get you know, the, the mass moment of inertia or the, the, the mass of a part that I've modeled, then I might need to specifically define my material. Um, if I want to know if it's going to fail and, and have that show up accurately in my report, then I'd want to specify my, my material. Um, I'm just going to choose whatever this is defaulted on, which is a, looks like just a generic alloy steel. Click apply and close. So I've applied my material to my part. Uh, next, I'm gonna go ahead and, and choose a fixture. So we have to kind of carefully choose how we are gonna fix this, this part. You know, what, what is it, um, which pieces don't move, right? Um, so I'm just gonna do kind of a basic, um, I guess more or less a beam bending style problem. So I'm just gonna say I wanna fix my geometry. And now it gives me some options. I'm gonna pick fixed um, and I'm just gonna pick I zoom in here a little, oops, zoom in here. I'm just gonna say I wanna fix this end. So this would be as if it's cemented into a wall. Great, um, I've fixed that end and I don't really need to define anything else here. I'll just go ahead and click okay. Next, I need to put a load on here. And again, there's a lot of different kinds of loads. I just want a basic force and I'm gonna apply it to this face of my part. And you can kind of see by default with the, oops, with the arrows here, it's pointing into my part. So it's a, a compressive axial load. Um, and that, you know, is fine if that's what I wanna do. I wanna pick something different. So I'm gonna click over on my options here, um, select a direction and See, I don't have my planes on here, so I'm gonna turn those on. And that allows me to specify what plane direction I want to use. So you can see here, I, I turned my planes on by clicking this, this view menu, and then I specified my top plane. And again, this is, I'm just kind of doing it arbitrarily, but you would pick it to match your situation. And then I picked what direction uh, of these three options. Of course, I could apply more than one and I can pick which direction up or down in this case um, by clicking the reverse direction checkbox. And then I'll go ahead and apply a load to this. Um, I don't actually you know, know what would make this interesting, but let's just do a thousand Newtons um, to see what that might look like. So I'm going to apply, oops, I accidentally scrolled on this. I'm going to apply a 1000 uh, Newton load 
to uh, that face and I'll click OK. All right, so I've got my fixture. I've got my load applied. There's actually not much more to do here. So next I need to mesh my part. So if you're familiar with finite element analysis, basically um, we mesh a part into you know little um, units and then we apply our, our analysis to each of those individual units and just kind of do it over and over again until all the units are solved. So I'll click Create Mesh. Here it gives me the option to define how, how coarse or fine the mesh is. Um, it performs exactly as you would expect. If I go all the way to the fine direction, that means it's going to take a long time to calculate or longer to calculate. Um, if I go all the way to the coarse, it'll be faster to calculate. And then of course, fine is more accurate and coarse is less accurate. So there's some sort of balance there, right? Um, typically somewhere in the middle will probably work for us. Um, if we find that our, because our geometry is complicated or our loading is complicated and we're not, you know, getting expected results, we can make that mesh a little finer um, to get a little bit more accuracy. But again, realizing that it's a trade-off in, in computation time. So I'll click OK to mesh that. It'll take just a second and we can see our mesh. You can get a sense of how fine it is by how large those um, areas are. And then I'm gonna click run the study. And this one's pretty simple, so it shouldn't take too long, hopefully. There, it's already done. And great, we've got some, some data that we can look at. Uh, first, I have up the stress plot. And of course, you can see it's, it's showing us the deformation, um, which is you know exaggerated, but we have stress on here um, in Pascal's. And so we can see this one is saying about 31 megapascals, and it's von Mises stress is what it shows us by default, which is basically max distortion energy theory um, applied to stress. And in the bottom here, it gives our yield strength so that you could compare uh, against this yield strength. And of course, you know, if, if we actually were exceeding our yield strength, it would put this little arrow up here to kind of show us which colors on our plot exceed our yield strength. Um, we didn't... Uh, we didn't exceed our yield strength, so um, that doesn't, you know, show us anything at the moment. And of course, you know, we just kind of arbitrarily specified the material. So I could also look at my displacement plot, which really just shows me how much the displacement is out at this end. Um, what's that? 0 0.001 millimeters, so not very much at all. Um, very small displacement, and of course, the picture is exaggerated. One thing I'm gonna I want to show you, I'm going to go back to the stress plot, and then if I double click on the stress plot, I can actually change what type of stress it's showing me. So by default, it's von Mises. I can go in here and I can say, I, I want to know the normal stress in a given direction. Um, I think it's, if I'm seeing my orientation correctly here, I think I could look at the Y stress, normal stress in the Y direction. Is that the direction I'm pointing, maybe? Um, so that's interesting. Um, if I had some shear stress going on that I was curious about, I could come in and look at my shear stress. Um, sometimes for me, at least I have a hard time figuring out exactly what direction we're talking about here. Um, so sometimes it's just a, a matter of picking one and seeing what it shows us and if it makes sense, but we can go in here and look at the shear stress and how that's distributed, um, based on direction and, and so forth. So we can change which, which stress is of interest. Von Mises is kind of the standard because it's, um, you know, as, as you know, for ductile materials, it's, it's um, kind of the one that we use typically if we're trying to compare against uh, our failure theory. So that's great. We can get these plots. Um, one useful thing is we can click this report button and that generates uh, a report for us that we can, you know, output to like PDF um, and then, you know, get whatever information that we, we want out of that and, and kind of use that as a, as a handoff thing. We'll probably use that in this class. Um, I can also, you know, if I find like a good image, uh, something that's really useful, I can um, take a kind of snapshot of that. Um, oh, and then the one other thing I wanted to mention, under plot tools, there's a really useful thing called the probe. Um, if I want to know where, you know, what the stress is at different locations, um, sometimes, you know, we might have 
uh, stress concentrations. Like up here, we have kind of some you know concentrated stress near the wall, and that might be okay. But sometimes if we have sharp angles in our geometry, that sort of artificially inflates the stress concentration. So we might say, well, we don't want to know what it is right at that wall, but rather, you know, a little bit out and, and then again, a little bit out here. So we can get these little um, pop-ups, which would show us the stress at this specific node in our mesh. Um, and it gives us that, that bit of information that, that might be useful. All right. So great. We can, we can kind of analyze and then use these, these results to compare with our hand calculations. And, and hopefully that's, that's useful for us. All right. Thank you.